No, we're not kidding, by the way. That is a real thing. You'll see it on Turner Classic Movies, and it was recorded today. And you'll go, oh, that's why Ben couldn't make it to old school, and ironically, Mark was on. I see it now. Do you um, think the Venn diagram of Turner Classic Movie viewers and TYT viewers is overlapping much? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's a Venn diagram of one. That makes <laughs> No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. There's plenty of TYT viewers that watch Turner Classic. There are great movies on Turner Classic movies, and you've got Ben, who is a, he's a little bit of a smartass, which I like. Yeah, indeed. So, uh... But he's not here, so can we move on? Yeah, that's at least perfectly to a classic movie named Mary Poppins. So, first question I have to ask you is, and I'm glad you were honest about Ben, because Ben would be us. Oh, you know, all classic movies are great, but, uh, right? Uh, so, have you ever seen the original Mary Poppins? I know you saw the remake, that's obvious. But no, I saw, yeah, I saw both. I saw the original and the remake, yes. Okay. And I saw the original as a kid. Imagine that. Well, hey, when was Mary Poppins? When did that happen? Uh, because... I, I remember we went to the theater, I literally remember the theater, and it was an event, kind of, you know? Yeah, and that was like the biggest movie of the year, right? Back then? Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, uh, 1964. Oh my gosh! That <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay, moving on. Anyway, it, so it's. I think uh, I saw it was re released about six years later, and that's the one I saw as a kid. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. That is no. way too. No, it's. I didn't realize it was that long ago. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Mark. Yes, I, I remember was, that it was spectacular. Yeah, I thought it sucked. Um, so that's what I wanted to discuss. So, um, like, okay, first of all, uh, as I said in the bonus episode, I can finally say Super Calid Jim. While I'm there, there goes that. Super Calid Fragile. Super Calid Fragilistic Expialidocious. Okay, got it. Um, but the acting is so fake. It's so fake. Uh, Jake, this is because you bring an adult's perspective to the film. When you're a kid, you don't notice that. You really don't. You have no to it. No. No. I, and, you know, I, no, I, not I, by I, it. You, you hear, oh, Dick Van Dyke's fake Cockney accent. It changes from scene to scene. Let me tell you, when you're a kid, you don't notice that stuff. You don't. No, no. We, nobody notices accent. That's true. But Joy, my 10-year-old daughter, turned to me and, and she basically, like, I'm paraphrasing, was like, what's wrong with their acting? Wow. <laughs> okay, it was not prompted by me. Okay? Look, we just got better. We got better at being more realistic. And more realistic is better. And, uh, and so that was the, they were still transitioning from the theater days. And in theater, you have to project to the back of the uh, seat, or the back to, to, to the folks in the, in yeah. the you know, peanut gallery. The back of the house, yeah. The back of the house. So you had to be like, <laughs> wow, <laughs> right? And, but now, like, hey, bring it down, bring it down. And, but that's not the main reason I brought it up. It's, to me, it's amazing how much culture changes and, and, and how much humor changes. So there's this joke that I'm sure you don't remember in there about, uh, and this was like the big joke of the of the movie. It was repeated like three, four times. It led to someone's death. Okay. <laughs> and it was um, a guy meets a, a one-legged, a, a person with one leg named Smith, okay? And then the punchline is, what's his other name, the other leg's name? Okay, that's a terrible joke. That's like that's like a grammar joke, and people are like, oh, what? What's it? What's it? Oh, what's it? <laughs> like, I don't know. Am I the only one amazed at humor? Because back then, people were like genuinely thought that was hilarious. I couldn't find you one person in America today that thinks that, that that's a funny joke. Humor is one of the things that really. It's a struggle for it to age well, and stuff like that just doesn't age well. Uh, I remember going to a festival where Jerry Lewis was speaking, and then they showed, and he's a legendary comic, right? And he was you know, famous the world over. I think he might have been one of the most famous, if not the most famous comics of the time, and biggest box office uh, draw of the time. In fact, there's a famous quote, I think, when they had a paramount who said, uh, 
if Jerry Lewis, I, I would uh, I would buy anything that Jerry Lewis pitched, including if he wanted to burn the studio down, I'd help him uh, light the match. Everything he suggested, the studio did, and he was a big hit. So I stayed after the Q&A, because they were showing one of his movies. I stayed with my girlfriend, and we literally couldn't get through 20 minutes of it. There was, it was so not funny. Now this is a guy who, as I say, was legendary as a comic. The yeah. humor just didn't work at all. You wonder how anybody could have ever laughed at it at the time, much less celebrated it as brilliant comedy. So I think, I think you're right about two things, it pains me to say. I think you're right about your, your first point, which is that the acting's gotten better and that our, even a young person, 10 years old, is so used to a greater authenticity to the acting that when they go back and look at another movie, it's like, wow, this is really, it's just not landing for them. You know, and they can't put it in some kind of stylized way in their head. And the second point is, yeah, humor, generally speaking, doesn't age well, you know? It, it, it is amazing. Like, I remember when we first came to this country, my dad would always complain, like, they, I don't, and this has a weird twist at the end, it's really interesting, but he'd be like, these young comedians, I don't understand them. They're, they, they're so bad. None of their jokes are funny. None of them are like red buttons. Right? <laughs> right? And, and Jackie Gleason, and... And remember the big joke in uh, in uh, Honeymooners? It was, oh, telephone, uh, Alice! Yeah. Telephone! And that joke was, is not only not funny now, but it's deeply uncomfortable because he's threatening to punch her to the moon. Right. <laughs> it, even, even knowing that he would never hit his wife, I mean, the character you know uh, is this, you know, crazy, you know, uh, uh, he's boiling over with all of this stuff, but he would never... Uh, be violent, we just we know the character. Just the utterance of it is enough to make you go, whoa, 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 dude, dude, that's just not funny even as a reference. Right. That, 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 that's a scene stealer. That's the scene closer. They button out with that line. Exactly. I love that term, button out. Okay, I'm so bad at buttoning out. I always, my, all my points start strong and then they just kind of, they don't button out, they peter out. Okay. I'm with you on that. But you know, you're actually really good. I, um, I, I, when you get going and I, you make a point uh, politically or, and you make a point uh, societally or culturally or whatever you're saying, you stick the landing, brother. You do. I, I find it difficult sometimes. Uh, I'm good on the ramp up, but then I can get a lot over my skis sometime and whoa! <laughs> well, I appreciate you saying that, but, but the very end, uh, I usually struggle with. Anyways, uh, so, but. So my dad didn't understand the new comics, loved the old comics, even though they made no sense. Like, so the moon's not even funny. I mean, forget the salt part. It's just not, I don't get it, right? Um, but there was one thing that was modern that my dad loved and thought was hilarious. You ready for this? Seinfeld. He would not miss Seinfeld for anything. It was Thursday night, everybody get out the way, get out, and he didn't care about TV, he didn't care about any of that stuff. But Seinfeld's on, get out the way, my dad's got to watch it, he can't miss a minute of it. That's Seinfeld. a great ode to Seinfeld, to Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David. Yeah, and they, it, that is multi-generational, you know? My folks like it, your folks like it, younger people like it. It was a top show with a younger demo, at the time. so it, it really, it's, uh, so maybe that's, uh, proof that not all humor is sort of, uh, has a tight expiration date. I mean, some of it really can last. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest, old school's gonna last. I mean, <laughs> they've been laughing at this stuff a couple hundred years later, everybody knows that. Um, by the way, now, like, Lenny Boy's become a member. <laughs> God bless you guys, I love it. Wow. And, 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 and Lenny, uh, Boy, uh, gave Sixteen dollars and ninety nine uh, cents, but not in American money, but in New Zealand money uh, and New Zealand dollars, presumably. And and seventy dollars in New Zealand is either two dollars here or two thousand dollars here. I'm not sure which one, but but Lenny Boy, thank you. Either way, it doesn't matter. We love you for it. We appreciate it. Uh, Vio wrote in. No, stop giving Jake money. Start giving Mark more. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last guy.
out and said, we're going to go to life. We're going to get life lessons in here. I know you guys love them. Although, again, look here. On Twitch, we're all bear dragging. I'm hitting that joint button. Hey, wait a minute. That's right. got one extra letter in there. And that's for later. Although, for you guys, it's right now. Yeah, sure. Hit the joint and the joint button. What do I care? I have more fun. Uh, my goofiness might even be amusing if you're high. Um, so, uh, B. Sue writes it, OMG, I have an alarm set for old school. It's the reason I look forward to Mondays now. Thank you. Uh, it's very nice of you. As uh, so the member section, the last one, Nadia's Maximus says, I would pay money for Mark. Takes things from Johnny Cash. I walk the line. Which then leads me to uh, wonder, Mark, do you sing? Well, uh, Jake, it's a great question. Who asked the question again? Uh, their name's already been wiped from the record. <laughs> <laughs> It's literally a race for my... Johnny uh, Cash, uh... Yes. Johnny Maximus. Thank you for putting it back, Cash. Yeah, what is it? Uh, so Naughty is Maximus. Naughty is Maximus, great name. And uh, the answer is Naughty and I'm glad you ask. Uh, I have a distinguished karaoke life. Um, used to actually have the karaoke parties with... This was in the first four seasons of American Idol. I was the uh, announcer on American Idol. So I was kind of mobbed up with that crew. The people from American Idol would come up to my home and would karaoke if I can just uh, drop an impressive kind of brag, which was really terrific. And so I developed some absolute karaoke chops, I could say that, Jack. Uh, but you have to stay in your range. You're right about that. So there's the stuff that's in my range. Elvis is very much in my range. Neil Diamond in my range. Johnny Cash is in my range. Uh, these are all things that I can cleanly hit, you know, no problem. Some of the higher stuff I have trouble with, but all those that I just mentioned. So, uh, yes, I uh, I like a good karaoke. I haven't done it in a while. It does require a little lubrication of some kind. You need to be a little buzzed somehow, right, to really begin to cut loose. Jake, I feel as though you would be a guy with great stage presence. I'm not so sure you would nail the actual tune. Am I right? Okay, I, I, well, you're enormously right. No, you've never been more right in your life. Uh, although, I do have one karaoke win to my credit. Okay? So, yeah, this goes to, uh, to ingenuity, hard work, perseverance, okay? So, I'm an awful singer. Uh, we have talked about it in a recent old school. I, I, don't, I don't know the difference between a beat and a tune and rhythm. I don't know. I don't understand any of those things, okay? The first time I found out there was only like five or six notes or something or others is when I watched Sound of Music with my kids. Uh, and I was like, oh no, a female deer. I was like, wait, I can do a rating. Well, so those are the only ones. I had no idea. By the way, did your kids not like a Sound of Music either and other Mary Poppins related because of Julie Andrews? They didn't like it. No, no, no. This is the this is why we know we're being objective. We love the sound of music. Yeah, sound of music is really good. Yeah, sound of music is fantastic. Holds up for time and immortal. Okay, St. Julia Andrews, uh, you know, musical, uh, you know, around the same time, but the, the music was fantastic, the plot was way better. Uh, and by the way, the best actor in Mary Poppins was Julia Andrews. And she was way understated compared to the other actors and then that pays off the sound of music which is actually a great movie. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, 